Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Today we're taking a look on the Wraith Lord Necromancer in Lost Epoch. After it took a quite large nerf in the 1.1 patch notes, but I'm glad to announce that it's still really strong and even Aberth viable, as we'll see here in the background. And the reason I went and tried the Wraith Lord again was actually of a new item that I added called Scale of Lemon State. And uh, this just screams Wraith Lord when I saw it. And I'll go over more at the end of the video explaining this item, so do stick around for that so don't miss it out. So the Wraith Lord Necromancer is something that I've been using to farm the new Harbinger bosses with. And it's been working out really nice, but it can also be kind of fast by doing monoliths as well. We're still going with ward as well here, and uh, even with the nerfs to death as well, we still got a decent chunk of it, and the character you see here still got some room for improvements. And let's start by going over how the build is working, and basically it's built around the Wraith Lord's Harbor Helmet, which you can get by farming the Helm Echoes in the Black Sun timeline to increase your chances of dropping it. The helm makes you spawn a Wraith Lord, and the whole build works around this minion basically. He will consume any other non Wraith minions you spawn, and this will then give the Wraith Lord a buff, increasing 10% of his health and also adding 3 spell damage for 10 seconds. And he can consume up to 5 minions now per cast. And this was one of the nerfs that was uh, providing uh, 10 spell damage before, so it's uh, quite a big nerf to this one. He shoot out necrotic beams hitting 3 enemies at a time, and this can sometimes be a bit uh, a, of an issue if you get into a pack with a lot of enemies for example, and if you are in a rush it uh, might not be able to kill everything in time, and uh, even though he's basically one shotting all the trash, but it can still be good to keep that in mind. And by using Bone Curse and Spec into Bone Prison, this will make the curse spawn, well, Bone Prisons. And the great thing here is that they actually count as minions. So this means that the Riffle will consume all of them and then buff himself once you used it. And on boss fights, for example, you don't want to spam the curse all of the time. And this will make the Riffle stop dealing damage, right, and start to consume the prisons instead. It takes uh, 3 times for him to consume them all, so you really just want to use it uh, once in a while, so you don't get too much uh, damage downtime. And Shade is an important part of the build, and the first one, Dread Shade, which is also the most important one that you want to use here. And uh, this makes our Wraith Lord not only buff the damage by a ton, but this also makes your minion always crit. And this is what makes this build super strong as you don't have to invest in minion crit chance and can just focus on getting as much damage as possible. The Wraith Lord will also start to take poison damage from this when you apply the shade on him, but as long as you stay in combat he's basically just going to leech back his health really really fast. And the Dread Shade also have a uptime of around 40 seconds or so, once that run out you will have to reapply them or resummon him and apply him that way. We're also using another shade, and that's Infernal Shade, and this one have a unlimited duration on the minions, and this is going to ramp up the cost speed for the Wraith Lord by a total of 72%, and will just make your Wraith deal damage really really fast. So that's basically the rotation, we spawn the Wraith, you put the shades on him, and then do the curse to spawn the Bone Prison, and we'll start to consume them to buff him, and then you're on your way. There's a note in the Wraith skill tree, Locus of Death, that gives us a huge damage multiplier to the Wraith, but uh, makes them unable to move. And this is something that we can overcome by picking up some boots with the experimental mod on it that make minion teleport around you after you use a traversal skill. You will need to have a tier 2 of this uh, mod to be able to uh, guarantee that your Wraith Lord teleports with you all the time. And you can find this by defeating the Exile Mage, and he randomly spawns from time to time. And this is something that you will need to have if you are going to use this node, of course. And if you're starting out before, you can just disable this for now, and come back later once you have the boots. And of course we want to use Transplant for this, which is going to be our travel skill. And uh, I like to try and get to close to 3 seconds of the cooldown for the skill. And that's just basically make it easier to clear monolith with it. But uh, it's nothing that's super important, but can be nice to aim for. You can get some cooldown recovery from different sources, like your boots or your belt for example. But you can also get some from the Acolyte Idols as well, uh, that you could use. 
And if we take a look on the other items that we use for the build, for our weapon we're using a Reach of the Grave, and this is with added minion spell damage as a legendary potential. And just straight out, if you don't have one with the added flat on it, a Soul Harvest base is a great example here. You get uh, the minion necrotic damage from this, and you can also get double uh, spell damage to minions on this as well. Same is going to be for Scepter. You can use a Skeletal Scepter base, and here we get increased minion damage from the base alone. And same here, you can use double uh, minion spell damage as a suffix. Otherwise, for Wands, go for Ivory Wand. That's just for some ward retention. You get one suffix with the Dominion spell damage, and then you can go for some extra necrotic penetration here. If we go back to the Reach of the Grave, the extra leech is nothing that you really need. You do get uh, from the Wraith passive tree, but it's a nice addition to have. You also get some increase to spell damage and also cost speed as well with this. So you just great with the build. Death Rattle is something that you want to grab as well, and that's for the critical damage multiplier for minions. We also get some extra intelligence, which is really nice as well, as this also scaled life and damage of our minions, and also providing us with ward retention for our character. Exanguinous makes 20% of current health lost per second, and then we gain that as a ward instead. And we also get up to 30% attack cost and movement speed after we use a potion. And it's just a really nice boost to movement speed from time to time here. Carcination of Momentum is a great ring that you can use as it will provide you with the swiftness buff. And this provides around 20 movement speed if you're max level. And it's just really nice to have when doing monoliths. You also get some armor to yourself and your minions. And then also up to 6 to all attributes. And I usually swap out this ring for a normal turquoise ring base uh, when I'm doing bosses as uh, we get uh, so much damage from it. We get the, the crit multi from the base alone and then you can just get even more damage right from uh, other prefix as well with the intelligence to top that off. And for the gloves you want to get another experimental mod here and that works exactly the same as the body armor. We lose health and we gain ward instead. And really, this just helps to push your max ward up. And as we're using a one-hander, we also want a catalyst with this as well. A Upland's focus base is what you want to aim for, and that's because it gives tons of intelligence, ward per second, and also ward retention, which is really great for us. The catalyst is also a great way to try and cap your resist here as well, as you can't get any health here. And uh, sometimes that's also important that you try to go for some extra minion health as well. Ideal here and also if you can on your belt. For defense overall, if you look at Necromancer, they don't really have too much to show for. Usually you have an army of uh, minions with you right that defend you. Now you only have uh, one basically. But getting high ward and also try just to cap your resist. And then it's basically all about trying to dodge everything to stay alive. But the great thing with this build is going to be that the damage is so high from your Wraith Lord and enemies will just be dead before you even take a hit from him. And for the stats that you really want to aim for is going to be health, resist, intelligence, minion damage and also health. And also vitality can be nice as well here for some extra health to your character. And one big thing that I missed on this character is the plus level of summon Wraith on the chest here, which makes us just add in more points to the skill for even more damage and cost speed, and then also the increased minion damage from the affix itself. And for the idols, you basically just want to go for as much health as you can here. Ward retention works also, but the stout idols with double health if you can get them, and even go with some resistor as well if you're struggling on that. And I also like to have at least one of these large idols with the chance to apply marked for death on here as well. And this is a curse that will reduce all resist by 25% to the enemy, so more damage from that. We do also apply it when we're using bone curse though, but it's only up for 4 seconds, so it might be some downtime for this sometimes. And for the blessing, starting with the black sun, here we went for the flat health on Reign of Dragon for all resistant. And then ended the storm for the ward decay threshold. He went with uh, physical resist on age of winter. And then lastly some flat armor on spirit of fire. 
And Spirit of Fire also have increased to minion damage here as well, but I feel that damage is not the problem. Surviving is more of an issue, so that will be up to you to choose from. And let's take a close look on our skills we're using. Start with Summon Wraith, and this is where we're going to get our Wraith Lord from. Locks of Death gives a huge damage multiplier, but makes the Wraith unable to move. But as mentioned earlier, we do counter this by getting the Teleport mod on the boots. Necrotic Hunger for increased necrotic damage. Also get extra Leech for the minions as well. And Dusk of the Living for extra critical multiplier. Sequel of Everize for a huge damage multiplier for the Wraith, 180% here. And also a multiplier to their health. And if you're getting the extra levels to your chest, uh, I will put them in Wraithbringer here for increase to cost speed. And also some in Reapers for the extra base damage. Might even take some engraved reality here for the extra health multipliers as well, if you're really struggling on their health. Next up, Transplant, and it's going to be our travel skill. Fleeting form for the colon recovery speed. And then we have Bone Armor, give us the Bone Armor buff, which makes us take less damage. And Apostry, just to increase the duration of Bone Armor. We are taking this wheel down here, and that's basically just going to fear enemies on uh, departure and arrival. Eclat's Fever, so we get the Haste buff when we use Transplant. And then Doombringer makes us use Bone Curse when we use Transplant. This will, however, not spawn the Bone Prisons, so do keep that in mind. And next, Bone Curse, which we are using to spawn Bone Prisons. And here we're also taking Shattered Prison to reduce the cooldown here. Ossify makes so they take less damage. And this is basically just so the Wraith Lord have some time to consume them. So you don't get killed by a random enemy. Defile Defense, get some armor shred chance here. And the Siege of Mortality will provide us with the Mark of Death, which I explained earlier. And then also Reaper's Mark to increase the Mark duration a little bit. And we're using Inferno Shade, and this is going to be to buff our Wraith Lords. And that's basically with the Manic Pyre. We get increased movement speed, attack speed, but most importantly cost speed here. And this will ramp up to a maximum of 72%. And by using Soulfire, this also makes the Infernal Shade now have an unlimited duration on minions or until the Wraith Lord die. Then we have Corrition, which will inflict uh, Armor Shred Chance to enemies that are around the Wraith Lord. And then we just have uh, one extra point in Brimstone here for a chance to slow enemies. Then we use the Dread Shade, the most important buff to our minion. The buff itself here gives us uh, 10 flat necrotic damage with spells and also 50% increased necrotic damage. We want to pick Lone Watcher, this will remove the health drain, this skill otherwise had, and also will increase the shade duration here. Grim Fate will give us a damage multiplier by 60%. Using Dying Coven for the extra cost speed, Blind Fury for even more cost speed here, all for one for even more damage multipliers. And then Egoism, the most important one, makes the minion always crit. And then we have Doom Wraith, and that's for the last damage multiplier by 45%, so there's a lot of damage multipliers here. As you can see, it's just insane how good this is. And then Princess Pack, which is going to be the one that we have to go through to get the last damage multipliers here. And this will be the thing that applies poisons to your Wraith Lord. And here a quick preview of the passive skill tree, but for more information about the build, I do recommend you go and check out Last Epoch Build Planner. To the top of the build plan you can also go to loot filters, so where you can find my ultimate loot filter with a lot of options depending on how strict you want it to be. Link for this will be in the description. So as I mentioned at the start, the reason I went back and tried Wraith Lord was uh, of the new added weapon Scales of uh, Lemonscape, and it's basically just a great weapon to use. And if you look at the base itself, it gives a necrotic penetration to minions, you have increased damage and health to your minions here as well, with some flat health to our character. And then we have the fun stuff here, Dread Shade has a 30% increased buff effect, and this is very interesting, and the downside is that you now only can use one shade though, and this makes us unable to use Infernal Shades for this setup. But uh, this unlocks new ways to do the build as it's open up a extra skill slot. And by not using Infernal Shade, uh, we will lose the 72% uh, cost speed that we get from it. But we now get some extra buffs from the Dread Shade instead. So we do get 30% more now for Dread Shade. And if you combine Dying Coven here, that's 24%. And also Blind Fury 40, that's uh, 64% in total. 
and if you add a 30 there it will now go up to uh, around 84 percent so that's around 20 extra from those two so we do lose a little bit but we gain some instead here right but then we also have all the damage multipliers you have 60 over here you have 40 over here and then another 45 here so that's 145 in total from the beginning here and then if you add the more buff effect here you get around 190 instead so we do gain some extra things from this right and also the base itself here you get some flat extra right and even some flat here and those also get buffed so yeah really awesome choice to use and I'll play around with this more and probably make an updated video once I get the one with the added spell damage to minions uh, on it. As the 100 weapon just felt like superior choice if you don't uh, have it on the new axe. And also by using this weapon it's a two-hander so we do lose the catalyst as well here. So you will have to try and get some extra defense here for this but uh, I'm sure that's going to be working out great. Maybe this opens up a new health based version instead. So what do you think about the Wraith Lord Necromancer? Have you tried it out before or try another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you've got any other questions feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!